Hi, I'm Tim Perry, Senior Content Manager with Multichannel Merchant. I'm with Sean Ryan, the CEO and co-founder of SLI Systems, and we are here at IRC 2013 uh, talking about some of the uh, some of the trends going on in e-commerce. Um, Sean, let's start with uh, Cyber Weekend uh, 2013. We know that Cyber Weekend 2012 was the biggest one yet. Um, have your clients started thinking about Cyber Weekend 2013, and how are they pl uh, starting to prepare for the onslaught of those customers? Uh, yeah, well, it's obviously a huge weekend, and it's a kickoff to the holiday season, traditional kickoff. Um, and so there's a few things they that they always need to be thinking about. You know, one is capacity, making sure that they have the capacity, uh, both all throughout their business. You know, they've got to have the server capacity. We've got to make sure that we can serve the search and navigation. We have the capacity for that, and then right through to the fulfillment, they've got to have all the right all the right stock in place and enough of the right stock. And I think that's one of the big challenges for for that is working out what is it that people are going to be wanting. Um, and of course, getting it at the right at the at the right price. And what about uh, the mobile shopper? Are your uh, are your clients trying new things to attract the mobile shopper? And for that matter, do you think shoppers are going to start making purchases uh, with their smartphone versus just using it to comparison shop and to uh, showroom? Yeah, d definitely. I mean, cu uh, customers are seeing more and more people are buying on the mobile devices. <clears throat> I actually think it's quite important to split out the tablets from the from the phones because the tablet's pretty much like a, de a desktop experience, but they're still counted in the mobile devices. So it's, a, it's, it's interesting to look and see, well, what is the actual, num uh, what is the traffic on the small screens like? Because that's where the experience is really, really different. Um, uh, but we are definitely seeing uh, more and more people are buying on the on, on the cell phones. And, you, and you've got to have the, the, the website optimized um, for that. Um, experience. You've got to have your search and navigation. Make sure that that's um, uh, optimised, and that's where we work with our customers. Um, but it's also important, uh, like for your, for your emails. A lot of people are reading emails on their cell phones, and you actually need to make sure that your emails are designed so that they can be read easily on the phone. Because if you're designing for the email for your for your desktop email, um, and and you haven't considered the phone, it can be quite a, you know there's a lot of zooming and stuff you need to do. Um, and if, you, if the email is optimised nicely for the phone, then when they click through to, through the opt, mobile optimised website, then it's a, it's a nice experience all the way through, and you get more traffic to your mobile site as well. Now, uh, is showrooming a concern for your customers, uh, or is this something that I, I know a few years ago the QR codes were the big thing? But is this something that now an effective uh, SEO strategy can help with combating um, the showrooming? Yeah, well, an SEO, you know, having SEO um, working nicely is important. Uh, so that if people are searching on Google, then um, uh, you know you, you're, you're ranking there. But often people are going straight to Amazon, and and uh, and so that is, so SEO is not so important if that's what they're doing. If they're going straight to Amazon and seeing if Amazon have it, I think it depends on the retailer as to whether or not um, showrooming's uh, uh, a, a big problem. A lot of our customers are apparel retailers, and they've got a relatively unique uh, product range. So you can't get that exact same shirt somewhere else necessarily. Some of them are commodity, like footwear, for for example, or obviously electronics and that sort of thing. And that's if, if it's a commodity where it's exactly the same product that you can get somewhere else, then um, you, you know you either need to provide some additional service there. So if you've got salespeople that can can add some sort of value, or um, uh, you, you've got to be able to compete on price, and so what you're seeing the retailers do now is have price guarantees and to try and get around the showroom. And so even if they do find a better price, they'll match it. Um, now, what are some of the creative things you've seen your clients do with uh, their drop-down menus and other uh, facets to uh, sell, mer sell more merchandise? I know for apparel merchants, it seems that's becoming more and more important. Um, what are what are some of the new hip things they're doing? Yeah, well. Um, so, so we work, you know, with the search pages, and, and the, the customers have a lot of structure to their data. So we're always uh, looking to do creative things with the facets. Um, one thing that's common, particularly for apparel, is uh, for the colour facet rather than just listing the colours, you know, with blue, red, green. Is you actually show a palette, so you, people can actually see the colours because they're by, by their nature much more visual, and it also takes up less room. And so, you know, colour palette's quite good. Another one we see is when you have a brand facet, rather than just saying the names of the brands, it's showing the logos of the brands. And then because, because you know, people are very visual, they can sort of uh, see, oh, that's the Levi's brand I'm clicking on, because they, they can see it as well as the, as the words. And um, uh, another one is 
it's uh, for the for when you have a facet that's a variable range facet like a price um, rather than sort of breaking it down into fixed ranges um, a slide is often a common thing to use and then you can see, uh, uh, also often seeing check boxes for when you can so you can sort of see see um, I know I've, my son's just turned 13 and you're not sure whether he's in the boys or the men's category right so you can click both of them with the check if you have a checkbox facet rather than just a link for a facet and then one of the other things we're seeing it's interesting we're using that user testing uh, com service where you can uh, you, uh, you pay like twenty dollars or something like that and someone will give them a task and they'll video themselves there's a, a capture their screen as they're going through their site and you'll sort of see them on the search where you have all these rich facets and if the if, if you don't have the same sort of rich facets on the navigation they're like oh where did all those really cool refinement options go so you want to make sure you've got a consistent experience if you're doing interesting stuff with your facets on your search make sure you've got those on your, nav on your main navigation as well now i know you um you're obviously you are uh site search usability and everything uh but the marketplace fairness act i'm sure your customers are talking with you about about that um it's going to pass in some way shape or form in the u.s Yes. Um, and how, how do you feel about the Marketplace Fairness Act and do you see, has uh, this become a concern for any of your clients? Yeah, well I suppose the, um, the, the traditional retailers sort of found it a disadvantage and you know it, it applies to show, showrooming if you can get something that's essentially tax free online then it's sort of a bit of a, the re retailers are at a bit of a disadvantage. Taxes are one of those things eventually you can't really avoid so it, it's going to pass in some shape or form. Um, and so it's it, it's it, it's probably inevi inevitable. It's probably the, the right sort of thing to, to happen, so that the online retailers don't have an advantage over the, the retailers that are based in, in state. Um, now, last month, I, I believe it was last month, uh, your IPO uh, launched. Uh, tell me a little about the IPO and what does what does this mean for SLI Systems? Is this something? Is this going to allow you guys to expand what you're doing, uh, do more things, um, uh, hire more staff? Uh, what's the uh, what's it mean to you so far? Yeah, well, so, so we raised some additional capital, um, another d d d another 15 million of additional capital that we're going to be putting towards growing the company, and that's mainly because we see there's still a huge opportunity to improve search on a lot of different retailers' websites, uh, both here in the US uh, and uh, and internationally as well. Um, most of our customers are in the US, and we see there'll still be most of the growth here. So we're going to be employing more sales, more marketing people, but also putting more resources into de uh, development. And then um, we're also we're expanding internationally. Um, we're, we're going to be growing our London office, growing our Australian office. Um, we've got a number of customers down in Brazil, we've been put, putting effort in there, and we're starting to get our first customers in Japan as well. You know, I should ask now, um, since we are talking a little bit about international and uh, Japan, you're starting to get your first customers. Uh, where else do you see growth opportunities? Are there other emerging some uh, some emerging companies that no one's really thinking of, or is it the usual ones like uh, India, Brazil, Russia? Yeah, well, um, I mean, obviously, in, in China is there's, there's you know e-commerce is a global phenomenon. It's happening everywhere. I think um, I read a report. It's it's supposed to be growing about 16% a year, year on year globally. Uh, I think it's a little bit lower than that here in the US because it's already the US is already the biggest market. Um, but uh, you know, as as a as a vendor selling into some of these markets, we see there's often less competition in in some of these other markets outside of the US, um, and and so they can be really good opportunities for us as a business um, uh, because e-commerce is, is it is going to be everywhere. All right, well, Sean, congratulations on the IPO, and enjoy the rest of uh, the IRC 2013. Excellent. Thanks very much, Tim. Right. Cheers.